In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome, dear friends, to the 17th Sunday of Ordinary Time. And thank you for joining us as we celebrate our Garden Mass. First, we welcome Alessandro, our Italian film director, and our lovely young married couple, Giselle and Paul. Whoever you are, dear friends, whatever you are, you're heartily welcome to our Mass. We begin by putting ourselves in honesty before an all-merciful Lord and ask Him to look upon us and all we cherish with kindness and love. Let your love be ready to console me, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let your love come to me, and I shall live. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your will, O Lord, is wonderful indeed. Therefore, I shall obey it. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on peace, earth peace, peace to people, people of good will. will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, you we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, God heavenly King, King, O God, God Almighty Father, Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only begotten Son, Lord God, God Lamb of God, God, Son of the Father, Father you take, take away the sins of the world, world have mercy on us. You take, take away, away the sins of the world, world receive our prayer. You, you are seated at the right hand of the Father, Father. have mercy on us. For you, you alone, alone are the Holy One, one. You, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> a reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream and said, Ask what you would like me to give you. Solomon replied, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in succession to David my father, but I am a very young man, unskilled in leadership. Your servant finds himself in the midst of this people of yours that you have chosen, a people so many its numbers cannot be counted or reckoned. Give your servant a heart to understand how to discern between good and evil, for who could govern this people of yours that is so great? It pleased the Lord that Solomon should have asked for this. Since you have asked for this, the Lord said, and not asked for long life for yourself, or riches or the lives of your enemies, but have asked for a discerning judgment for yourself. Here and now I do what you ask. I give you a heart wise and shrewd as none before you has had, and none will after you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The response is, Lord, how I love your law. Lord, how, how I, I love, love your, your law. law. My part, I have resolved, O Lord, is to obey your word. The law from your mouth means more to me than silver and gold. Lord, Lord how I, I love, love your Lord. law. Let your love be ready to console me by your promise to your servant. Let your love come to me, and I shall live for your law is my delight. Lord, Lord how, how I, I love your law. That is why I love your commands more than finest gold. That is why I rule my life by your precepts. I hate false ways. Lord, Lord how, how I, I love, love your law. law. 
Your will is wonderful indeed, therefore I obey it. The unfolding of your word gives light and teaches the simple. Lord, Lord how, how I, I love, love your law. law. Alleluia, alleluia, I call, call your friends, friends, says the Lord, because I have made known to you everything I have learnt from my Father. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone has found. He hides it again, goes off happy, sells everything he owns and buys the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he finds one of great value, he goes and sells everything he owns and buys it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the spring of 1947, a Bedouin shepherd called Muhammad the Wolf was shepherding his goats on the western shore of the Dead Sea. One of the boy's goats had strayed and to follow it he had to climb a very steep cliff. Passing a cave in the rock face, he threw a stone inside and when he heard the sound of breakage, he became frightened and he ran back to get his friend to come. Together they returned and entered the cave. Inside the cave, they found several large clay jars. Inside the jars, wrapped in lengths of linen, was one of the greatest modern archaeological discoveries, the dead sea scrolls. The two young treasures, or young shepherds rather, had stumbled on a marvellous treasure, but they didn't realise it. They tried to sell the scrolls in Bethlehem to a merchant, but he would not give them the 20 pounds that they were asking for. It wasn't until the four scrolls came into the hands of the Syrian patriarch in Jerusalem and three scrolls were smuggled out to the United States that the treasure trove came to light. Among the ancient manuscripts was the rule of the Qumran community and fragments of scripture. Carbon dating on the linen wrappings gave them the median date of AD 33. At around that same date, some miles north of Qumran, Jesus of Nazareth told a story about a farm worker who stumbles on a great treasure which has been hidden in a field. The man appreciates the value of the find, probably a jar full of money or valuables. He's an astute character. The first thing he does is bury the treasure again. Then, he sells everything he owns to buy that field. He experiences the great joy of discovery. He knows the value of his find. He's prepared to pay the cost, and the cost for him is everything. Jesus told another parable about a man who discovers a great treasure. Unlike the farm worker, this man does not stumble upon it, but he discovers it after a long, long search. He's a wealthy merchant who's devoted his life to hunting for treasure in the shape of fine pearls. It's worth noting that in Palestine, pearls were a byword for what was supremely valuable. Elsewhere in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus says, do not give dogs what is holy, and do not throw your pearls in front of pigs. The merchant in this story has no intention of decorating the pig's dye with pearls. He's collecting the finest he can lay his hands on. He's an expert. 
he knows precisely what he's looking for. So when he comes across the finest pearl he has ever set his eyes on, he's in no doubt what to do. Immediately he sells everything he owns so that he can possess this pearl that is without peer. In both parables, the two men appreciate the true value of what they have discovered and are willing to pay the cost of everything so they can have this new treasure. To outsiders looking at them, these two men might appear totally unhinged in taking such a risk, in risking everything on this venture. But both are certain about the wisdom of what they have to do. For them, the folly would be in passing over the main chance. <laughs> in the parables, Jesus is asking the crowds, do they perceive the kingdom of God in the same way? <laughs> do they really see it as a treasure that's worth more than anything that they now value in life? If the kingdom of God is not perceived as the authentic article, people will not bother renouncing anything to have it. Jesus' own perception of life differed sharply from so many people. He was constantly challenging people to see and see and look again in order to understand anew. To that purpose, his stories turned much popular wisdom on its head. And this was done in the hope that his listeners might catch something of another way of living in God's world. In effect, Jesus had what Solomon prayed for, a heart to discern the ways of people and the ways of God. But more than this, Jesus had the determination to close the gap between the two ways. We know that Jesus gave up everything he valued, his family, his home, his security, to do his Father's will. For Jesus, there was no greater treasure than the will of his Father. When he uncovered what it was, he renounced everything to make it his own. His own family and neighbours thought his ways either puzzling or foolish. And when he gave up his own life, even his disciples could not understand this ultimate folly. But there was purpose in it. Even in death, Jesus kept hold to his treasure. Dear friends, none of us can gain anything of value without renouncing something. Perhaps what we have to renounce first is what our perception of real treasure is. Few of us will chance on the crock of gold at the end of the rainbow or win the lottery or stumble on an oil field in the backyard but we have all stumbled on treasure. Like the two Bedouin shepherd boys, we may have problems finding, appreciating what we have found wrapped in the ordinary stuff of life. The real treasure of life, of course, is under our noses in the people we love that we share life with, in the opportunities we face every day to exercise the values of Jesus. None of this might appear a glittering prize, but it is in the heart of the ordinary that we discover Jesus. He's the authentic article. He's hidden in the commonplace hoping that we'll stumble on that truth before too long.
Sometimes we can forget and need to be reminded that God turns everything to our good. We bring our prayers to this very God and believe in his mercy and power. We pray for the Pope, our bishops and our priests. We ask that they would be strengthened through prayer and emboldened to works of charity and evangelization. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. We pray for our government and all those who work collaboratively with it in various capacities. We ask that these partnerships will be fruitful and benefit those who are most in need of assistance and support. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. We pray for the faith of our nation, that through this tragic and challenging season, the need for faith and a belief in God, in a God who saves and cares for each of us individually, has been recognised by many people, and that as normality resumes, this would grow, not disappear. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us. Dear friends, thank you very much for sending in your prayer intentions. I'll just read a few of them. Dear Father McBride, please pray for my brother Stephen and his wife and their two young children. They have been in an unhappy marriage for over 10 years. We've offered many prayers that they would be able to work through their difficulties. However, it seems their relationship is coming to an end and they will separate. I worry for their children and the tragic consequences of a broken family. I don't know what to ask for, but God knows what they need. Please pray that God will bless them and fill them with his grace. Dear Father Dennis, Paul, Giselle and Alessandro, firstly let me say, I shall be praying for all of you in thanksgiving for the way you have played such an important part in every week of the lockdown. I live alone and have looked forward to being with you every Sunday morning, admiring the plants, the courtyard, listening to the birds and the wind chimes, but most of all, being able to be part of such a special, intimate Mass. Please pray for my family and the parishioners of St. Patrick's. May the whole parish pull together to help everyone adapt to the new normal. With best wishes to you and your talented trio. Dear Father, I'd be very grateful to you if you'd be kind enough to place my prayer on the altar at Mass if you think it is right to do. Please help my two daughters to find the love, joy and marriage they so richly deserve. And also please lighten the workload of my elder daughter who is a single mother with a toddler. It has become so heavy, it necessitates working late in the evenings also and she's very tired. Of course, she appreciates having a job in these difficult times. Thank you. Dear Father Dennis, I hope this letter finds you well. <coughs> I'm so happy to have the chance of contacting you. If this could be a traditional paper letter, it would have to travel several hundreds of miles to get to you. I live in Chile in a small rural community, very close to our capital. Even it's quite near, the presence of hills and valleys make you feel like you're living at the end of the world. My first message is thank you. Also many thanks to your great team, Giselle, her husband Paul and Alessandro. I would like to ask you if you have any chance to please pray for my father-in-law. He's been ill for years. His lungs are slowly becoming rigid, like branches of an old tree. From time to time he cannot breathe. He's currently lying on his bed, wishing to leave this world, because he feels so much pain, so much part of the time. He's not enjoying life anymore. My prayer, Father, is for you to ask dear Jesus to send him before he dies the present of faith. From my distant little life, I send you a hug and a message of deep gratitude.
God our Father, we ask you to listen and to attend to all the prayers that we have gathered here before you. We pray that you will attend them, and we ask this in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. I accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Philip, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the sins of the world. Of the world. Have, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say the word, and, and my soul shall be healed.
The Welsh poet Dylan Thomas, his plea to his dying father, do not go gentle into that good night. Do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Though wise men at their end no dark is right, because their words had forked no lightning, they do not go gentle into that good night. Good men, the last wave by, crying how bright their frail deeds might have danced in a green bay, rage, rage against the dying of the light. Wild men who caught and sang the sun in flight and learned too late they grieved it on its way. Do not go gentle into that good night. Grave men near death who see with blinding sight, blind eyes could blaze like meteors and be gay. Rage, rage against the dying of the night. And you, my father, there on the sad height, curse, bless me now with your fierce tears, I pray. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Let us pray. As this celebration, dear Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God bless you and keep you the one who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, our Mass is ended. We go glorifying the Lord by our life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Stay well, dear friends, stay safe and stay generous. Amen.